In this video, I'll show you how to superimpose structures. This is great for when you're trying to compare maybe an unbound enzyme with an enzyme that's bound to an inhibitor. You can look for structural changes and things like that. Also, if a protein undergoes a large conformational change, you'll be able to do measurements and compare how much things move. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about NMR structures. So let's fetch one right now. NMR structures are really cool. This is um, the NMR structure of ubiquitin, which is a regulatory protein involved in many processes in, in eukaryotes. And so ubiquitin can become a covalently attached, conjugated to things, to other uh, proteins, and cause them to undergo conformational changes, cause them to be tagged um, for proteases to break them down, and many other things. So here is ubiquitin, but this structure is special because notice right down here, we have 116 states. And this means this NMR structure shows many different conformations of the protein. So we can either press play here, we can scroll uh, manually through the conformations. So notice that change, so we could do this one at a time. Or we can press play and get this rapidly moving um, protein. It'll be rapidly moving through all the states and you'll be able to see those changes. We can all do, also do this from the command line by typing mplay. And so now you can move this in 3D space and kind of experience the flexibility of this protein here. But this is really fast. So we can actually go up to the movie and reset the frame rate to be something a little bit slower. And so let's just go with five frames per second. And now we can really see the flexibility and you can really see how this um, alpha helix is shifting. And so ubiquitin binds many, many, many proteins in the body and it is known to be in many different conformations when it binds. And so now we can see some of the flexibility that allows it to um, so promiscuously bind other proteins. To stop the movie, we can type M stop or we can press the stop button down here. Now that structure of ubiquitin was not from Homo sapiens, so I just opened up a new pymole window and we're going to go ahead and fetch the structure of ubiquitin that is from Homo sapiens. So we'll fetch 1D3Z. And there we have it. This one only has 10 states, that's why I wanted to start with the other one um, because we have less confirmations here for the Homo sapiens one. And of course we can press play and see it wiggle around. Really experience the dynamics of the protein, which I think is just so cool. All right, but this video is about superimposing, so let's fetch some things that we can superimpose now. So I'll use the up arrows to get my fetch command back, and I'm going to fetch 1J74, and that'll pop up in the frame. And I also want to fetch 2GMI. All right, so we have a few proteins in here, and now we want to superimpose them. Um, so this is actually an enzyme that is involved in the process of conjugating, covalently attaching ubiquitin to other proteins. It's involved in the second stage of that. And so I want to just compare the structures, see if there's any major changes. And so I'm going to use a command. There are two commands to do this, the align command and the super command. The PyMole wiki uh, says that the super command is more robust, so that's what I'll use. And I'm going to superimpose everything onto 2GMI, so um, the last protein that I brought in, because that's the protein that's bound to ubiquitin. And so what I need to do is type these codes to superimpose them onto this, but the second um, PDB ID that I type is where the first protein is going to go. So it's wise to put this one last both times. So let me just show you what I mean here. 1D3Z comma, and I'm going to have this snap onto 2GMI. 
And so you can see it jumped right over here, pretty well aligned. And now we wanna superimpose the other one. So I'm gonna use my up arrow keys. Leave the two GMI here. And we'll go one J74. And that'll superimpose this onto here. And now let's display our sequence. We have another piece that's not part of the superimposition and that might you know, get a little confusing as we're looking at things. Maybe we wanna hide this chain. And so I'm gonna go ahead and select and oh, it looks very, very convenient that this was uh, chain A right here. So I'm just gonna press shift to select this whole chain. I can rename it. Um, we'll call it unaligned. And then I can operate on this separately um, and just hide it. And so we can see we have everything lined up here. Um, if I want to, I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom on the ubiquitin bound portion. And so now we can actually go through our states here, or we could, we could play the movie and, and just kind of watch this wiggle around, or we can manually, if we click the right thing, go through the states and kind of see which one of these aligns best with uh, what we have here. And so state uh, five actually looks pretty good. And we really wanna look for the parts where we have our, um, actually, well, maybe that that is a little bit, eh, that's a little bit different here. See, um, we have more order in this green one than this pink one right here. Um, the loops don't matter as much, those are very flexible, but these secondary structural elements that Pymol shows, you know, as the alpha helix and the beta sheet, those are fairly well defined and that's why they show up in this way. And so lining up those pieces is more important. The loops are very flexible and so who knows where they'll be in the NMR structure at that given time. The last thing I want to show you is how to superimpose when the super command doesn't work well for you. So I'll go ahead and fetch that same ubiquitin structure. And I'm gonna fetch a new protein. 1NB8. And 1NBF. This is a deubiquitinating enzyme, and so it removes ubiquitin from other proteins. And so here we have it. Let's go ahead and we want to align onto this 1NBF, the last thing that I brought in. And so we'll use the super command. and that popped in right there. We can zoom in and see that ubiquitin is aligned fairly well. And now let's go ahead and try to superimpose um, the protein that's unbound to the one that is bound to ubiquitin. So we'll just replace that um, first part with 1NB8. And this jumps over here, and we can see that this really isn't aligning well. We have an alpha helix, there's nothing there. Um, these beta sheets are kind of intertwined. So it's a really good thing to check our sequence at this point and make sure, um, of course you want the sequence to be the same from the same organism. And we can see that this sequence here is aligned, is matched up pretty well, let's say. So when this sort of thing happens, you know, it might just be the conformational change is so great that Pymol doesn't know what to do. Perhaps it's choosing a different part of the protein. Notice this one is much bigger, um, the, the pink one here, one NBF. So it has a lot more going on in the structure. So maybe it doesn't know where to align it very well. So what we can do is create a selection. So I'm gonna take this chain A and I'm gonna scroll over and then I see this part where some residues are missing. The crystallographer knows they're there, but they couldn't actually see them. So I'm just gonna go up to that point. So I'll press shift and click so I can select that whole part. And now I'm going to rename my selection. So we'll call this 1NB8SELE -E, and that'll pop up here. 
Now I'm going to click elsewhere. Start at the beginning here again. And just go up to the same point and make a selection. Now we'll rename this selection to 1NBF, S-E-L-E, -E. and there we have it. Now we're going to reapply our super command, but using the selections that we made. So all I have to add on here is S-E-L-E, S-E-L-E, -E, and look at that, that's a lot better. Now we have a lot of parts of this protein that aren't aligning. And so let's go ahead, we know that we aligned chain A, so let's just check, I think it's gonna be, yeah, this is all belonging to chain B. And so we can, we can even select the waters if we want, select all of this, and I'm not even gonna make a selection from it, I'm just gonna hide everything for this quick analysis. And then we have these other pieces. If you don't know where to find them, you can click on your structure and get one of these um, residues within this selected. Then scroll over so we see that we're in this chain here. So I can just go ahead and select this whole chain, hide everything. And then we have a chain or two over here. Let's go ahead and click on that so we can find it. So you see that's this little um, line that's lighting up that I can scroll over to and find which chain this is. And so it, the residue is right there and it's lit up. I'm just gonna scroll a little bit more to select this whole chain. All right, and now we have that. I'm gonna go ahead and hide the waters, hide non-bonded, clean this up a little because we just wanna focus on this structure here. So when I read the paper about this enzyme, it told me that the active site residues are histidine 464 and cysteine 223. So I'm gonna go ahead and find those residues and make a selection um, in chain A of each of these. So going back to chain A, so it lists A right here. Uh, so we want four, six, two, two, three first. So here's our two, two, three. So I'm just going to do this for one um, protein at a time. Then I'll scroll over, find four, six. So here's four, six, six. Four, six, four is two before that. And so there are my residues lit up. And I'll rename this to active 1NB8. And let's click away and do the same for the um, 1NBF protein. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and let's just zoom in on these residues. And I haven't shown them as anything. So for each of these, let's show sticks. And I'll do that here as well. And now we can see a major shift in these active site residues upon binding ubiquitin. And we can actually um, show, just display these one at a time if we wanna just turn off one protein and examine these residues but I'm gonna turn them both on for a second. It's sometimes useful to measure how much a, uh, an individual residue has shifted. Sometimes it's interesting to um, look at the distance between the catalytic residues. So in, in this protein, we can already see these are really far away. These are um, much closer, so they're brought much closer once this is bound to ubiquitin. So we might just open our measurement wizard and I think we could just maybe measure these nitrogens to get an, a sense of how much this has shifted. So we'll go from this nitrogen to this nitrogen. And we can see this residue has had a 2.8 angstrom shift from this analysis. 
So in this lesson, we learned a little bit about NMR structures and how they show us a little bit more of the dynamics of how a protein actually wiggles around in our body. We learned how to superimpose structures so we could compare them, and we learned what to do when the super impose command doesn't really work that well, how we can make selections and align those. And one thing I really want to say here is that a crystal structure um, versus an NMR structure, the crystal structure is like taking a picture of somebody running past you. You get a snapshot of them at this one moment, but they were dynamically running and moving, and all you see is that one piece. So when you see a crystal structure, it's limited because these proteins are wiggling and moving around within our bodies, and we only see one piece of that. So even these are just one moment in time, so it's important to think that, and I think that the NMR structures really help us appreciate how the crystal structure, you know, just gives us that snapshot, but the NMR structure shows us the dynamics. Thanks so much for watching.